Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the last session, we studied about various cashier replacement policies. In this particular session, we are going to solve some interesting previous year questions on least recently used cashier replacement policy. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Consider this question. It came in Gate Information Technology 2004 paper. Consider a fully associative cache with 8 cache blocks numbered 0 to 7 and the following sequence of memory block requests are given. Now if least recently used replacement policy is used, which cache block will have memory block number 7? Now these are the options provided. So let's try to solve it. Now it's mentioned in the question that the cache is a fully associative cache with 8 cache blocks numbered 0 to 7. Now since least recently used replacement policy is being used therefore we are going to maintain one lru list so when the processor requests the block number four it will be placed inside the cache line number zero and at the same time it will be included in our lru list now remember this property regarding lru list that is at the end of the list whichever block is present that is the most recently used block so at this point 4 is the most recently used block. Now for the block request number 3, it will be placed inside the line number 1 and thereafter it will be added into the LRU list of ours. So now 3 happens to be the most recently used block. Similarly from the block request number 25 onwards, they will be placed inside the respective cache lines and at the same time they will be included in our LRU list. Now after the block number 6 has been enlisted, if you observe, the next block request is 25. Now this will result in a cache hit since it's already present inside the cache. However, the LRU list for that matter will be updated, adding 25 at the end of the list because it's now the most recently used block. Now the next block request is 8 which will also result in a cache hit since it's already present inside the cache. However, the LRU list will be updated placing 8 at the end of the list, indicating that 8 is now the most recently used block. Thereafter, the block requests 16 and 35, they will be placed in the respective line number 6 and 7 and also will be added in our LRU list. And in the end, 35 will be our most recently used block. Now, during the block request number 45, the cache happens to be full. Now, if you observe our LRU list there, the block number 4 is listed as the least recently used block. Therefore, the block number 4 will be selected for eviction and it will make space for the newly requested block number 45. Now, since the block number 45 is the most recently used block now, therefore, it will be added at the end of our LRU list. Now, coming to the next block request, that is block request number 22, the cache is again full. Now, if you observe our LRU list, the block number 3 is now the least recently used block inside the list. Therefore, block number 3 will be selected for eviction, making space for the newly requested block number 22. Therefore, the block number 22 will be placed inside the line number 1. Also, since it is the most recently used block, therefore it will be added at the end of our LRU list. Now coming to the next block request, that is the block request number 8, it will result in another cache hit because 8 is already present inside the cache. However, we will update our LRU list because 8 is now the most recently used block, therefore 8 will now be added at the end of the list. Now during the block request number 3, we will have to opt for replacement because the cache is full and from the LRU list of ours, we know that the block number 19 is the least recently used block. Therefore, block number 19 will be selected for eviction, making space for the newly requested block number 3. Now, since the block number 3 has been added just now, therefore, it will be added in our LRU list as well, indicating that it is the most recently used block as of now. Now for the next block request, that is block number 16, it will result in a cache hit because it's already present inside the cache. However, since it is now the most recently used block, therefore, it will be placed at the end of the list. Thereafter, for the block request number 25, it will also result in another cache hit because it's already present inside the cache line number 2. Nonetheless, our LRU list will be updated, placing 25 at the end of our list, indicating that 25 is now the most recently used block. 
Now finally for the block request number 7 we will have to opt for replacement since the cache is already full and from our LRU list we get to know that the block number 6 is the least recently used block. Therefore the block number 6 will be selected for eviction making space for the newly requested block number 7. And at the same time at the end of our LRU list 7 will be added because now 7 is the most recently used block. Now we are to find out which cache block will have the memory block number 7 at the end of all these block requests. Now if you observe closely the cache line number 5 is having the memory block number 7. Therefore, for the question number 1, the option B happens to be the correct choice. So basically, for a fully associative cache with some block requests, if we are going to solve such kind of problems, we have to maintain one LRU list of our own, where we have to update the list in case of cache hits, also whenever replacement takes place. Now let's get to the next question, shall we? Consider this question, it came in Gate Information Technology 2005 paper. Consider a two-way set associative cache memory with four sets and total eight cache blocks and the cache blocks are having numbers from 0 to 7. So basically it's a two-way set associative cache and it has four sets. Now we also have a main memory with 128 blocks where the block numbers are from 0 to 127. Now the question is, what memory blocks will be present inside the cache after the following sequence of memory block references if LRU policy is used for cache block replacement? That means we have these block requests and we have to perform block placement in our cache and at the end, whatever blocks are there inside the cache will be from one of these options. Now we are to assume that initially the cache did not have any memory block from the current job. That basically means the cache is initially empty. So let's try to solve this. Now our cache has 8 blocks. And since it's a 2 way set associative cache and it also has 4 sets, suppose the sets are numbered from 0 to 3. Now for block placement in set associative mapping, we take the main memory block number and the number of sets and we perform a modulus operation. And that gives us the particular set where a main memory block will be mapped onto. Now since we are using least recently used replacement policy and our cache is a set associative one, therefore we have to maintain LRU lists. That means we will maintain different lists for all the different sets. Now during the block request number 0, for block placement we have to take block number 0 and perform mod 4 because those many sets are in there in our cache which will result in 0. That means the main memory block number 0 can be placed anywhere inside the set number 0. Which gives us two different options, cache line number 0 and line number 1. Now suppose the main memory block number 0 is placed inside the line number 0. And at the same time, the set number 0 will have the block number 0 in its LRU list. Now during the next block request, that is the block request number 5, we need to perform the same drill 5 mod 4, which will give us 1. That means the block number 5 can be placed anywhere inside the set number 1, which again gives us two different choices, that is the line number 2 and line number 3. And let's assume the block number 5 is placed inside line number 2. And at the same time, the LRU list of set number 1 will include the block number 5. Now coming to the next block request, that is the block request number 3, we will again perform the same drill for block placement, that is 3 mod 4, which will result in 3. That means the block number 3 can be placed anywhere inside the set number 3, which again gives us two different options, line number 6 and line number 7. Assuming that the block number 3 got placed inside line number 6, we also have to update the LRU list for set number 3 including the block number 3. Now coming to the next request that is block request number 9, we have to perform the same drill that is 9 mod 4 which will give us 1. That means the main memory block number 9 will have to be placed inside set number 1 which now only has the single option of line number 3. Now when we place the block number 9 inside line number 3, we will have to modify our LRU list for set number 1 placing 9 at the end which will indicate that inside set number 1, 9 is the most recently used block. 
Now during the next block request, that is block request number 7, we will perform the same drill for block placement, that is 7 mod 4, which will result in 3. That means the block number 7 will have to be placed inside the line number 7 of set 3. Now once we place the block number 7 inside the line number 7, we will have to update the LRU list for set number 3, placing 7 at the end of it, which will indicate that block number 7 is the most recently used block inside set 3. Now for the next block request, that is block request number 0, it will result in a cache hit. So we need not do anything about it, because set number 0 has only one element. Now coming to the next block request, that is block request number 16, we will again perform the same drill for block placement, that is 16 mod 4, which will result in 0, which means the main memory block number 16 will have to be placed inside the line number 1 of set number 0. Now once we place the main memory block number 16 inside line number 1, thereafter we will update the set number 0's LRU list, placing 16 at the end, which will indicate that the block number 16 is now the most recently used block of set number 0. Now finally, for the block request number 55, we will again perform the same drill for block placement, that is 55 mod 4, which will result in 3, because 13 multiplied by 4 is 52, and 55 minus 52 is 3. Now from this we know that the main memory block number 55 will have to be placed inside set number 3. But since the set number 3 is full, therefore we have to opt for replacement. Now inside set number 3's LRU list, 3 happens to be the least recently used block. Therefore, 3 will be selected for eviction, making space for the newly requested block number 55. And therefore, the block number 55 will be placed inside line number 6. Now once we place the block number 55 inside line number 6, Thereafter, we will have to update the LRU list for set number 3, placing 55 at the end of it, indicating 55 is now the most recently used block of set 3. Now let's observe the contents of the cache a bit carefully. The cache has the memory block 0, the memory block 5, 7, 9, 16 and 55. Therefore, from all these block requests, we only have these inside the cache. To be precise, we only don't have the block number 3 inside the cache anymore. Therefore, for this question, we only have option number C as the correct choice. Alright folks, that will be all for this session. I hope we learned something new and equally interesting. Do always remember that in order to solve problems involving LRU replacement policy, in case of fully associative cache, we maintain a single LRU list. And for set associative cache, we need to maintain separate LRU lists for all the sets inside the cache. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.